Is the HK416 still the king in Escape from Tarkov? Is it better compared to the M4A1? And why is the HK416 such a meta weapon? This is the topic of today's video. Dear comrades, Ivan the German is back for you guys and today I have another meta build video in or for Escape from Tarkov. So grab a drink or two and enjoy the show. We are talking all about the HK416 in Escape from Tarkov. So let's start with the meta builds and I have two versions for you and you can still modify them, depends on what you like, more recoil or, ma or more ergonomic. So this is the first build with 51 ergonomics and 34 vertical recoil. Of course you can modify some stuff, like you can change the grip to the forges grip, you have a 37 vert re vertical recoil and 63 ergonomics, which is quite high. So guys, your support is as crazy as this build is. So don't forget to like this video. We are very glad to see that we can help to improve your gaming experience and to entertain you a little bit. Of course, you can get a little bit less recoil if you change the Moe stock to the PRS Gen 3 stock, you have 33 vertical recoil, but you also will lose a lot of ergonomics. That's why I would go with, definitely would go with the Moe stock. Don't forget the rubber butt pad. And right now you can change the RK2 to the shift grip. You will lose a little bit of vertical recoil, as I said, but you have very high ergonomics. This is the first build. It is, of course, quite expensive. What really important is that you are using the blackout suppressor. It's the best suppressor for the HK, but you can also change the suppressor to the beast. I will show that for you in a second. And we have a little bit less recoil, not that much. So let's check the other build. The only big difference is that we can use a different grip. Let's check that out. We have a 33 vertical recoil and 46 ergonomics. Right here we are using the MRS 14 inch key mod rail. And because of that we can use the Hera Arm CQR grip. Of course you can change the grip to an RK2 or to the shift of course, um, but with this build if you like the Hera Arms grip you need this rail to use the Hera Arms, but also same stuff you can change the PRS to the MOE to gain a little bit more ergonomics and you can change the suppressor if you don't like the blackout, but this is the build, this is the basic build for meta build. This is, it is of course both builds are quite expensive, especially if you don't have your traders on level 4. But the big benefits, and that's the big difference compared to the M4A1, you have a little bit more recoil, but very very much more ergonomics. So let's compare the 416 and the M4. On the left it's the M4. Um, you can check out this build, the Meta M4 build, in a different video. I will link that of course. And as you can see we have a 29 vertical recoil, which is very great. But we have only 45 ergonomics. Of course you can change the grip right here or the stock to gain a little bit more ergonomics, but you will also lose recoil. Furthermore, we have 50 more rounds per minute for the 416 and we have more ergonomics, but a little bit more recoil also. So it really depends. I like the 416 because of the higher fire rate. So what we are going to do now is like a comparison side by side with the M4 and the 416. No recoil control and recoil control. Let's start with the no recoil control comparison. This was the 29 recoil M4. Let's go with the HK. So, and what we can see now is we have a bit more jump for the 416, but the recoil is nice because you can control it quite well. You will see that afterwards because you only have to push your mouse down. The M4 was a little bit to the right, but the HK is just pull your mouse down and we have a great recoil, but the 29 recoil for the M4 is also very intense. So next round is recoil controlled. And let's compare it. So the Heckler & Koch 416 likes to jump a little bit around, but you have a little bit better ergonomics, so it really depends what you like. But as I said, you can change grips, you can change stocks, depends on what you like. Use the PRS or the Shift for your perfect build. For the scopes, 
I like the high mount RMR. I also like the EOTech XPS 3.0 because you don't have this double dot reticle, just a single point. I like that very much. You can play canted sides, you can play some well days on it with a canted side version or some voodoo. It really works quite well with the HK or the M4. Let's talk about magazines real quick. We have this standard PMAC, which you can use, you only have minus free ergonomics, nothing else. The FDE version of the Gen 3 magazine also has a buff with check speed modifier, which is quite nice. But the battle mags are very great. You only have minus 2 ergonomics and plus 10 unload and load modifier. And right now, of course, with the mag pull, you have a less ergonomics debuff. But you also, and that's the thing, you are going to load and unload for a long time. Plus 60% is quite a lot compared with the Stanek standard 60 round magazine. Uh, only minus two ergonomics more, but only 20% load and unload modifier. But that's the thing, compare the prices around 60 to 65k for the PMAC and let's say only 57k for the, st for the standard rounds. Sometimes they're a bit cheaper, but I would go for the standard rounds, but I play what, I'm, what I have in my inventory. But if you are min-maxing your stuff, go for the standard Stanek. Let's talk about ammunition real quick. Same as I did in the M4 video. The M856A1 has a little bit less penetration compared to the 855A1, but a little bit higher damage. Both rounds are great. I like the 855A1 because you are shooting so fast and so accurate that I like to penetrate a lot and killing with a lot of hits. So that's the thing. Uh, it really is a personal preference. So, but the 995, which is close to a tripled of the price from the 855, is is very very brutal because you have a higher bullet velocity, which is great for long range shooting. I will show some clips. You can do your shooter board in heaven really well with an M4 or 416, and you have a very high penetration. A little bit less damage, of course, but the penetration is crazy. So that's why the 995 build is isn't that bad. What you can do is play like a 30 mag first because the because of the less um, recoil debuff so you can play the 30 mag first and a 60 in your in your tactical rig or you can really try hard and put your 60 rounders in your in your gamma and you can unload out of your gamma that works also during the raid so yeah you can do it depends on how much you min want to min maxing your builds let's talk about a low budget version the low budget version yeah, you can do it. You have a 56 recoil and almost 60 ergonomics. But let's say if you don't can afford some, some good modifications or the ammunition, I would really recommend play some SMGs or some other low budget weapons. I'm really surprised about the MPX. This is an almost full uh, modded version of the MPX. But I will do a separate video about the MPX. But look at the stats, guys. 75 recoil with a magazine. Without the magazine, we have 80 and you can change some stuff to get some more ergonomics, but we have like 29 vertical recoil and that's great. So, and it's quite cheap because nobody's playing the MPX. I don't know why everybody's playing the Vector, but the MPX is great, also the MP5, but I will link you some videos to give you some more information about that. Let's talk about the 416, some more information and hints. Of course, the 416 is a really long weapon, but with this, 416, same thing as with the M4, you can push really well because you have a high fire rate, a very low recoil, a good ergonomics, and you can shoot a lot. And you should shoot a lot because that's the thing why you want to have this low recoil with this high fire rate. You can shoot a lot and you can suppress your enemy with this, let's say, with this firepower. You should suppress the M4, in my opinion, because giving less information to your enemy and it sounds brutal if someone playing the suppressed M4, but the thing is, you should cover as much as information about yourself as possible. Of course, this build is quite expensive, but that's the thing with meta weapons. Furthermore, you can snipe really well, like for some woods or reserve runs, you can run a voodoo, you can run the world day, and with a canted sight, uh, you can play it quite well. So I would recommend a 416 or M4 if you're doing some shooter born in heaven. Unfortunately, you're not leveling DMR or sniper skill. I think they should change it. Like if you're using scope guns, you should use your or level your sniper skill 
but that's how Tarkov works, but for Shooter Born in Heaven. But that's just a small tip for Shooter Born in Heaven. Use some 556 by 45 weapons like the Ace I said, ADAR, 416 or M4. The thing is with a 416 or an M4, I would push as much as you can because you have a really high firepower. Holding corners in Tarkov is quite difficult due to the fact we have a very low tick server, uh, desync and all that stuff. If you know how to flank and how to push, you should do that with this loadout. Use some proper armor like some nice rigs or some slicks or whatever that you don't have that much loss of a movement speed. With more movement speed, this build works even better. I'm going to do a low budget HK version, as I said, and as you can see right now, maybe I will change something to make it a little bit cheaper. New suppressor, but a suppressor is really important because this will help you with your recoil. But let's see what we can do with the 416. As I said, if you can't afford a proper build or proper ammunition, don't run the weapon and run something cheaper. The ammunition is quite important. So is the 416 still the king in Tarkov? I think so, because how Tarkov actually works, the 416 fits perfectly into this let's say, how you can abuse Tarkov with pushing and with firepower. And that's a big problem why, in my opinion, Tarkov is, or that's a factor why Tarkov is not a realistic game. But that's the topic for another video. Is the 416 king in Tarkov? I would say yes, definitely. This build is impressive. You can shred chats like nothing. You can shred scavs, scav boss or whatever. You can dominate on laps. Of course, it's a high risk because it's really expensive this, to run this build. But that's the thing why money isn't Tarkov, to waste it. To waste it for good gear, to waste it for good weapons. And that's why you should spend your money. Spend your money. Don't have fear to lose your equipment because the better your equipment is, the higher your chance to survive the raid or to kill something. But that's my opinion. I'm interested in your opinion. Write it in the comments below and see you in the next video, guys.